Yeah, the, uh, boy, the, there's, I hesitate a little bit, Cole, because as you guys know, there's uh, a lot that's, that's happened and been going on over the course of the last, you know, three days, five days, week here with, um, you know, with AJ and with, with Antoine. Um, and you know, you're thinking about how we reshuffle a little bit, and you know what we do coming into this game, and, and how we you know, how we best approach it from an offensive standpoint, from a defensive standpoint, and not a lot of time to make too many you know changes. Um, but my you know I, I guess my mind and, and really my you know our staff guys, we you know we spend a lot more time you know talking about and, and talking with you know Antoine, AJ, um, our team. Um, so. Maybe back to your question, Cole. You know, just want guys to be active. You know, want them to attack the attack the glass. Uh, uh, things we. And I'm gonna start listing off a couple things, but the things we talk about all the time. You know, defend them. Make them shoot a shot that's got to go over the top of you. Uh, so we're not giving up easy baskets. You know, rebound it hard, as I mentioned. Get active to the glass. Let's push it in transition. Play the way we're gonna play. Let's get five some touches. Let's let the offense work for us a little bit better than we did last week in Sioux Falls at times. Um, so really just the basic stuff, Cole, but, but wanting to see a, a good energy level, wanting to see a team that's that's pretty active. It seems like perhaps <clears throat> that the communication with the team, given the circumstances that have played out over the past few days, took precedent over like reorganizing the offense or some schematic things. Yeah, yeah, you'd be you'd be correct in that. Uh, you know, these are uh, you know these are these are things that are you know anything to do with our players, you know, our staff, our program, um, anything to do with with those things uh, are are, are going to you know, they, they just take precedence over you know over what's going on with with a single game or, or adjustments to the offense and defense and you know obviously. Um, there's a point where you've got to move those things, you know, get get through them and get past them and move those things, um, you know, to the side burner, if you will. I don't, I don't think to the back burner, but to the side burner, if you will, and and really get to okay, what are we going to do? Uh, what changes do we need to make if we've got to make some adjustments to our offense and defense and get into practice and work on some of those changes with the roster that we have right now? Um, so that that will be coming. Um, in saying that, our top priority is still going to be. AJ uh, Gonar, Titan coming back from his his injury, um, and I uh, and Antoine, you know, those guys are that's still going to be our top priority. Um, but we also need to now spend time um, on what we're going to do with the roster that we do have and, and get to work on on that in practice. Thanks, Ben. Yep. Thanks, Colt. Coach. As far as AJ goes, uh, how long has he been b b battling the hip issue? And uh, you have any other information today, just on kind of where he's at as, as far as the decision process? Yeah, that uh, you know, Nick, it's uh, pain showed up for the first time in the second game in Sioux Falls. And that was the first time where he noticed uh, he noticed pain. The first time he talked with our staff, with Bish, our trainer. Uh, so we were talking through it during the second game a little bit, obviously after that game, before the third game, um, after the third game. And then when we got back, we got to the, uh, you know, the doctor, you know, got the MRI done, um, went down and saw the doctor in Iowa City, um, and now in the process of continuing to gather more information on our end, uh, Dr. Clark here, uh, the doctor in Iowa City, um, he's reaching out and talking to to people that he knows that have dealt with hip injuries. Um, so that's the process that's going on right now, Nick. But um, in terms of when the first time where AJ felt sharp pain or pain that, that limited him was the second game in Sioux Falls. Um, prior to that, you know, his, his hips have, you know, just generally speaking, they've always been a little bit tight. Um, and he's always worked hard on his stretching and different things, but it's never been, a th never been anything where he has felt pain. So it's never been anything that's limited his workouts or limited his practice time or limited his ability to play the way that, that he's capable of playing in a game. Um, so first time would have been during that second game in Sioux Falls. A lot of issues impacting so many players within your program having to make tough decisions you know, over the last couple of weeks. Uh, how's the group uh, kind of handled everything that's been going on? Yeah, they, they've uh, really proud of them. Uh, 
you know, in particular from the standpoint of, of supporting their teammates. And, you know, that's, that's certainly, um, you know, certainly what you would expect to see, um, certainly the feeling that you would expect to have. But until you're, until you're in the middle of it, um, you don't know exactly you know, what that dynamic is going to be like. And uh, the guys have been uh, very supportive of each other. Uh, you know, you can see the genuine, you know, the genuine hurt. Uh, you know, even when Titan was went down, and we knew that was going to be a couple months. You know, I've had a number of different guys ask me about Gonar's waiver, and once it got denied, same thing as we were waiting for the appeal uh, to get ruled on. You know, a number of different guys asking me before or after practice, "Hey, you hear anything about Gonar yet?" Uh, and then the two most recent, all right, with AJ um, and his his status um, with Antoine and, and where he's at with, with things and our discussions with him, um, you know, th there's been a lot of support. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a great group. Uh, they're willing to lean on each other, and, and there's been a lot of support, Nick. How equipped is Bowen to kind of take over more of a, a, a major role there in that backcourt now, obviously, when you look at, look at AJ and Antoine uh, being out of the mix for, for the time being? Yeah, that's, you know, that all of a sudden that becomes a, uh, you know, he was going to be important as we saw last week, you know, with AJ and Antoine, Bowen was going to be a big part of this. Uh, but now, you know, that, uh, um, that light shines, you know, that's going to shine a little brighter on him and, and that position. Uh, and he's, you know, I think that the good thing for us, uh, Nick and, and guys is uh, Bowen's, you know, he's ready for it. You know, not necessarily ready for it from an experience standpoint, you know, having played a bunch of minutes at the college level and against uh, college college teams just with just four games under his belt, but he's ready for it. You know, he, he loves to play. He's got a great bounce in his step. You know, he's not scared. Uh, our his teammates you know, already this early in his career, they've already got a ton of confidence in his ability to make plays and make shots. So um, it's a lot for a true freshman, but he's ready. Able to see uh, Evan for the first time there today. Uh, what's what's he going to be able to provide for this team uh, now being back on the court? Yeah, that uh, you know things things have changed a lot for him and in, in uh, you know with Antoine and AJ and uh, moves him into a spot where uh, where he's you know got to found himself into the rotation uh, here tonight and you know he he played pretty well tonight. Uh, you know we haven't talked a lot about him, but he hasn't he hasn't had full practices for the last. Um, you know, day after day after day for the last six weeks, he's been been battling some patella tendonitis. So he's been in and out of practice, and um, so not not having had a regular practice schedule and routine, uh, Nick. He's um, he moved around good the last couple of days. I thought he moved around pretty good tonight. I think the thing that we saw with Ev, he's got great footwork, and he showed it. That there was two passes he made tonight, uh, uh, <clears throat> which we see you know we see from him in practice. You know, quite often we saw it a lot last year. Uh, his feel for for help and you know where that little pocket is, uh, and then his timing is really good. You know, his ability to, to to do it just right when it comes to passing is at a it's at a high level. Um, so there's some things he does, even though he doesn't. Again, you know, talking the same with Bowen. It, you know, those two guys haven't played many college games, um, but they've both got some. They've got some tools. They've got some things that you can't teach. And, and uh, so, yeah, we'll see where Ev goes. Uh, just one last question. Obviously, scheduling is kind of going to be, you know, pretty fluid throughout the season. But uh, I know Richmond had to cancel a couple of games. Uh, uh, have you heard anything on, on the status of that one? Uh, not, not yet, Nick. Uh, I've talked with, with Chris Mooney, their head coach. Uh, he and I have known each other for a long time. Um, so we, we talked the other night. Uh, we don't have – there hasn't been – we haven't changed the game yet. Um uh, uh, we'll be talking again uh, tomorrow uh, to see where they're at with their COVID protocol, uh, to see if the, if if that game still you know if that game is still going to happen. Right now, that game is on its schedule, though, Nick.